from pulling the highest score on rides to making sure you get the most fast passes you can in one day, we've got the tips and tricks today for your most competitive Disney fans. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. There's lots to be competitive about in Disney World, so if your family is the one with a running scoreboard in your living room, you know who you are. This video is definitely for you, but even if you're not constantly striving for the gold medal, we've got some great tips and tricks for you today to not only up your scores on rides, but also make sure you have the info you need to ride as many rides as you can and not miss some of the best food in Disney World. Yup, even that. All right, let's talk about high scores. So we're gonna talk about several rides and attractions right now that you can rack up some awesome scores and give you some tips and tricks to how to get those high scores. Toy Story Mania over there in Hollywood Studios, the only ride in Hollywood Studios that doesn't have a height requirement. This one is competitive fun for the whole family. Not only is this a ride, it's an interactive arcade style shooting game where you play against the other riders in your car. Each game in the ride has its own set of Easter eggs and tips to get a high score. Now, Easter eggs are hidden things, is what Disney calls hidden secrets, basically, in their rides and attractions and restaurants and everywhere else. Don't waste your time with the practice round. You don't want to tire your arm out. In the first game at Hollywood Studios Toy Story Mania, be sure to hit the fox on the hen house and aim for the higher point animals at the bottom of the screen. Now, don't bother with the lower 100 point ducks in the middle of the screen. Go for the big points only. If you're on the opposite side of the hen house, keep an eye out for a mouse running up the side of the barn. If you hit them, the barn will flip inside out and you'll be able to shoot the whole bunch of mice running around in there. Game two, aim for those lava squiggles to unlock a lava flow with high point balloons coming from the top of the volcano. Game three with the green army men, look for the flying plates to pop up between the mountains. If you hit all of those, the middle mountain will transform into a tank and shoot high scoring plates right at you. And if you can ring all of the aliens in the spaceship on game four all at once, it will transform into a robot that will open its mouth to catch rings. Each time it opens, the point value will be worth more, so don't get distracted with lower point aliens and shoot fast once the mouth does open. That one is a good one to collaboratively do with your ride partner. In fact, all of these are. You're both gonna get more opportunities for points if you work together to make sure those things happen. Now on game five, be sure to open and hit all of the targets. They'll increase in value each time you open them. And when the car starts moving, look towards the bottom of the screen for the highest point values. All right, moving on to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin over there in Magic Kingdom. Another two-player shooting game ride in the Magic Kingdom. This one uses lasers, plus you have a joystick to pivot around to see all of your targets. This one you'll want to practice shooting. The lasers are a bit hard to see and you'll want to get the hang of your gun before targets appear. Note, if you hold down the trigger, it will keep firing. Also make sure you've got the hang of steering the vehicle. In the first room, you're going to encounter a big robot. You want to aim for the target on the inside of the arms to rack up 100,000 points. The laser is really shooting at stuff, we promise. As you exit the first room, aim for the claw above you to score another 100,000 points. You can keep shooting at this as you're moving into the second room. In the second room, aim for the top of the volcano. Keep firing, this is the highest point item in the room. In the third room, on Zerg's ship, there's a target at the bottom that will get you 25,000 points. And when you're traveling through the star tunnel, try to hit the body of the spaceship that's flying around for another 100,000. Follow those tips and you should be able to max out Galactic Hero status on this ride. On Test Track in Epcot, the fastest ride at Disney World, clocking in at 64 miles per hour. This one also has a competitive element to it. In the queue, you build your own SIM car. Making design and style choices will actually affect how your car performs on the course. Now, this doesn't actually affect the ride itself. The ride is always the same. But after each test, your model car will get a score and get ranked with the other riders' cars for which handled the best. When designing your car, you want to move quickly through the basics like shape and width, but pay attention to the category point values as you make changes. You want to keep them all as high as possible. And once you get to the accessories section at the end, you can pick up lots of extra points by adding hood elements and wheel upgrades. If you want to get some more practice, there's a few kiosks in the interactive games area after the attraction where you can design without a time limit. The area is also great if you have little ones under the height requirement or you're looking for a few minutes of AC to keep the kids entertained. That's a place where you can practice designing your car and keep those kids entertained for a little bit playing with those games. 
on the Millennium Falcon in Disney's Galaxy's Edge, how to get the pilot spot. This is one of our biggest tips because people really, really love to beat the pilot in this ride. From our experience, cast members will hand out assignments in order with the pilot positions being the first two handed out. So if you wanna make sure you get the pilot, try to be the first two in your group of six to be assigned positions. You can ask to wait if you'd like to pilot, but it's at the discretion of the cast member if they let you do that. Note, if you use single rider, you won't be able to request pilot and you'll very likely won't get it as you're filling in the last seats in an odd numbered group. If you are piloting, you'll have the most control over the mission. Don't worry because Hondo Anaka will be giving you instructions the entire time. But if you don't want to wreck the ship and end up owing him some credits, here's a few tips. The left pilot position can be a little more difficult as there's more to crash into on the sides of the ship. Also, locate the brake button quickly. It will flash red, but you only have a few seconds to press it before you're not gonna break in time. The first container of coaxium is pretty easy to get, but if you wanna get the second one, be ready to chase that train as soon as it comes into view and stay close behind it so gunners can aim in the right direction. For gunners, you'll be told when to shoot. You have unlimited ammo, but accuracy affects your score, so if you wanna keep it high, only shoot when you need to. Engineers will know when they need to do something. Everything starts lighting up next to you, but enjoy the ride when you're not called to action. One thing to note is that during that chase for the second coaxium, keep pressing the harpoon button after you've locked onto the train to help reel it in. Hondo and the state of the ship when you exit will let you know if you've done a good job. If it was good, you might just have a stowaway on board. If it was bad, well, you may have seriously damaged the ship and you'll come out of the cockpit to crackling wires. The Mountain Challenge, so the Magic Kingdom Mountain Challenge is almost a rite of passage. Now this isn't an attraction or a ride, it is a challenge. You're probably gonna try to ride all those Magic Kingdom mountains anyway, so why not up the challenge and try to get them all done in one day or even right after the other. So what do you have to do to complete the challenge? Splash Mountain, 40 inch height requirement. Lines can get long during warm months. There's a 50 foot drop on this log flume ride, but don't let that distract you from the fun story and animatronics throughout the nearly 12 minute ride. And remember on this one, you may get wet, so pick up a Ziploc bag in the queue to store phones and anything else you don't want to get wet. You can actually return the Ziploc bag if it's not something that you want to keep. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is next, right next to Splash Mountain in Frontierland. This one also has a 40 inch height requirement and reaches speeds of 35 miles per hour. By design, the coaster has a rickety feel to it and it travels through caves with bats, which can be dark and scary for little ones, so be prepared. Next Magic Kingdom Mountain is Space Mountain. There's a 44 inch height requirement at this indoor coaster that's totally in the dark. And this is one of the rides that's actually pretty different from its Disneyland counterpart. The Magic Kingdom was actually built first and more closely resembles the ride track and vehicle style of the Matterhorn in Disneyland's Space Mountain. Luckily in Magic Kingdom, you can select three fast passes for any ride. There's no tiers in this park like in others. So if you plan ahead, you can get fast passes for all three mountains. Now, if you want to up the stakes, add on either of these mountains, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, technically not a mountain, but mines are in mountains. And it's a super fun coaster, so if you can, you should definitely add it to your challenge, but it's gonna be tough. It's really, really hard to get a fast pass for this one. That's a 39 inch height requirement, and this coaster features a few dark ride moments to break up the action. And then Expedition Everest, if you want to expand your mountain conquering to another park, you can head over to Animal Kingdom for Expedition Everest dark moments, a backwards track, speeds of 50 miles per hour, a big 80 foot drop, and Disco Yeti. This one's got a 44 inch height requirement and is one of the most thrilling rides at Disney World. All right, next challenge for you guys, the four parks challenge. Think the mountain challenge is easy? Why not try hitting all four parks in one day? You'll wanna get up early for this one and have a plan of which rides you'll wanna hit and maybe stay on top of checking for new and additional fast passes throughout your day. In theory, this one isn't too complicated. Start in one park early in the morning, hit a few attractions and hop to the next. But if you plan to ride big ticket rides, be sure to budget time in line if you aren't able to score a fast pass and keep tabs on when you need to be moving on to the next park. We recommend planning some break into your day as well, stop for a show, or even budget in a sit-down meal into your plans. Four parks in one day can be really hectic, so be sure to take a breather every few rides. Next challenge, eat around Epcot. If food competitions are more your style, why not challenge your family to eating around the world in Epcot? In our opinion, this is probably the best challenge and there's so many ways to do it. You can go classic and stop for something iconic in each World Showcase country. You can drink around the world, head to the Pyramid for La Cava del Tequila's margaritas, grab a beer in Germany or a wine session in France. And if you visit during a festival, you've got so many more delicious options. For each Epcot festival, we will give you the full rundown of the best of the best on the 
first day that that festival is open here at Disney Food Blog. And while the Food and Wine Festival may have just ended, see you later, Raclette. We hope to see you next year. The Festival of the Holidays has started and will run until December 30th. Now, we've eaten everything at the festival. You can check out our Best of the Fest video to see our top picks. And of course, we've got photos and reviews of every single dish over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Eating around the world in a group can be great because you can split several items and try more dishes. So try that Eating Around Epcot challenge. And of course, we have the Fast Pass Challenge. We talk a lot on the channel about how to maximize your Fast Pass. We've got a whole video on how to tackle the new tier system in Hollywood Studios. Our top tip, by the way, is get as many as possible. If you're planning your trip, you know how to pick three Fast Passes ahead of time, 60 days out for Disney World and 30 days out for off-site guests. And all of those three have to be in one park. But after you've used those three, you can select more Fast Passes one at a time for as long as there are Fast Pass return times available. Challenge yourself and your family to see just how many Fast Passes you can get in one day. If you're looking for specific times or rides that aren't coming up when you go to make your fourth Fast Pass, keep refreshing. Scroll back and forth through the times and more Fast Pass options will pop up. We've gotten last minute Fast Passes for top rides in each park just by refreshing often. You can go ahead and make another Fast Pass reservation as soon as you tap your magic band to enter the queue, so put your time waiting to good use and always check to see if you can modify a Fast Pass for an earlier time. If you're doing this challenge, you don't want to waste time waiting for your next Fast Pass window to open. So remember, as soon as you tap and get into that fast pass line, go and modify your next fast pass to be earlier. Also remember, you can typically enter the fast pass line five minutes early and up to 15 minutes late at cast member discretion. While we usually recommend booking fast passes for late morning and in the afternoon, if you want to see just how many fast passes you can get in one day, we recommend starting earlier so you're already picking your second and third round of fast passes when the crowds start arriving in the parks. So there's our tips for rides, challenges for the competitive traveler. We know you guys are going to have a blast in Walt Disney World, but we want to make sure you have even more fun with all of these little competitions you can play against each other. Thanks for listening, you guys, and thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.